Greetings viewers, welcome back to the channel. As you can see, we are under the hood of my 2004 GMC Sierra 3500 with an LLY Duramax diesel V8. More issues. This truck seems to never let me down in the number of issues it has. So I went to start it up the other day to leave. I was actually gonna go buy an RV and uh, started the truck up, went to lock the shop and it cut off on me. Went back to try to start it again and all it would do was crank, no firing up, no running. So after a little bit of head scratching and looking in the fuse box, I found that I had a blown fuse for the EDU as labeled in the fuse box, which would be uh, basically for the fuel injection control module or the FICM. So I replaced that fuse, hoping that it was just a fluke, but rarely is it a fluke when a fuse blows. Started the truck up, it ran for two seconds and then killed over again, blowing the same fuse. So that circuit, we'll put the wiring diagram up right now. As you see, the EDM fuse there is a 25 amp and it has supplies power through it to two pink wires. The two pink wires come over to the two connectors for the fuel injection control module and one goes into each of the plugs, C1 and C2. So an easy and fast way to diagnose if you have a short in the actual fuel injection control module or if you have an issue with the wiring harness, which is a common issue, uh, disconnect the two connectors at the fuel injection control module, put a new fuse in, turn the key on and see if the fuse blows. I did this, my fuse did not blow. I even tried to crank the engine over and still no issue, no blowing of the fuse. Turn the key back off came back and I hooked up the smaller connector of the two, I believe a C2, and turned the key back on and tried to crank the engine. No blowing of the fuse. Turned the key back off again. Disconnected C2. Connected C1 or the larger connector. Turned the key on and pop, there went the fuse. So that lets me know that our short is internal to the fuel injection control module. That is a little shortcut to get there. Now, as I said, if you had the plugs disconnected and turned the key on and your fuse still blew, I would look at the wiring next. Likely you have a chafed wire, one of those two power wires is chafed and is shorting out to ground, pulling too much amperage and blowing that fuse. Now if you look at the bracket beside your alternator, that is a very notorious spot for the wiring harness to chafe and to break wires or to skin them back enough for them to short to ground. Check there first. Like I said though, I've already had that issue and I've already resolved it. I fixed the wires that were broken, soldered in replacement wires, covered it all in heat shrink, taped it up real good, and I put a insulator between the metal bracket and the wiring loom. I just cut a serpentine belt and put part of the serpentine belt against the metal, put the wiring harness against it and zip tied it tightly to it so there would be no more chafing. So that wasn't my issue. So now it looks like we're gonna have to replace the fuel injection control module on this truck. Well, right now, uh, a new unit is about $1,700. Uh, you can send it off for about $250 to have it rebuilt from various rebuild services. And you can find rebands from $600 to $800. Not a cheap repair, no matter which way you go with it. I've seen some other videos on YouTube on these FICMs when they fail. Some people that actually open them up. And it looks like there's a trio of capacitors inside that are notorious for letting go. So me being the cheapskate that I am, and the fact that this information is nowhere to be found on the internet, we're gonna remove my thickum right now, and we're gonna tear it apart and see if we can find what has actually shorted internally on this fuel injection control module. And we're gonna try to fix it ourselves and save myself and you viewers that have the same issue, a couple hundred bucks, hopefully. So with that said, let's go ahead and get started with removing the fuel injection control module. All right, guys, first and foremost, disconnect both of your batteries negative cable. Uh, we went ahead and removed the charge pipe between the turbo inlet and the air box. Removed the upper lid of the air box and the air filter. Four Phillips head screws, number three Phillips, hold the air box lid on. And I believe it's two eight millimeter uh, worm, gear, worm gear clamps that hold the uh, intake pipe between the air box and the turbo inlet. Once that's out of your way, we can go ahead and remove the connectors. I'm gonna just grab and pull up as you see. Once it pops or clicks, you can pull it down. 
Same as the other connector, just push that tab down till it clicks into place, and then you can wiggle it back off of the fuel injection control module. We'll just wrap this back around here and set it out of our way. All right, next thing we need to do is disconnect our fuel line. Now, there is a 17 millimeter uh, banjo fitting here. We need to, replace, we need to remove, remove that because that is a hard line that goes up behind the alternator and around the intake. So we can't get the soft line off, so we're gonna have to take it loose here. Now the bottom here, just off of uh, out of frame, there is a soft hose coming into another banjo bolt. We don't have to take that one loose. We do have a clamp here. We can take that clamp loose and pull that hose back off. Uh, it's good if you have a pair of crimp pliers or hose pinch off pliers to uh, pinch off that hose so you don't start siphoning diesel fuel out when that hose is loose. So first off, I'm gonna take the pinch off pliers. I'm gonna pinch off that uh, diesel fuel supply line. And there's a soft hose, so you don't have to worry about crushing anything. There's no inner metal liner or anything like that. All right, so go ahead and pinch that off. I've put worm gear clamps on my hoses. I believe they're spring clamps from the factory. My truck had some rust on it and those clamps got weak and started to fail. Uh, so take the whatever style clamp you've got loose at that lower hose and remove that hose from the bottom of the ficum. Again, diesel fuel is gonna spill out. So be warned. So got that hose off there. Just a little bit of diesel fuel comes out, not a ton. So 17 millimeter at the top banjo bolt here. There's a little ceiling crush washer here, top and bottom. You will need to get a set of those, or just one actually, since we're not taking the bottom one loose from your GM dealership to reseal that when we go to reinstall it, or if you're removing to replace your Ficum with a reman or a new unit. It's kind of a one-time use deal. So we'll pull that out and set that aside. Now our diesel lines in and out are disconnected. We've got 14 millimeter headed bolts here, here, and here. Go ahead and zip those out. And just like that, our fuel injection control module is free. We can take it inside and get on the bench and open it up. Or you can reverse this procedure to install a newer reman unit. All right, so here's the fuel injection control module out of the truck. I'll go ahead and flip it over. And we've got, looks like four uh, either hex or Torx fasteners holding it onto this back plate. And it is a Torx, and it is a T15. I'm gonna go ahead and remove those. All right, now that those fasteners are out of there, we'll go ahead and remove this back plate from the module. It is kind of glued down, so you will have to break the seal. I 
I can already smell burnt electronic smell just from cracking the seal on this. Go ahead and open her up. And check the board for any burn spots. I'm seeing a big burn spot already. Let's see if we can get this loose enough where we can flip it out of this uh, rear piece. Take a look at the back side of the board. We're gonna need to get to the back side of the board anyway to solder this, but uh, I don't know if you can see that black spot right there around those capacitors. So I'm gonna turn the camera off real quick. Look at this, see how I gotta get this board off and we'll be back. All right, so I got the board up. There is quite a bit of uh, it's elastic on the back of it. So what I did was pull up slight pressure on the connector side and took a pocket screwdriver and gently pried along the edges on each side and it let go. Uh, but we can clearly see our short right there as we see the burnt spot on the back uh, plate here. Also, remember that dark spot around that capacitor. If we flip over the board, we can see Hopefully uh, you can see well enough on this video that there is a dark spot right there at the base of that third capacitor. It has shorted out the board. It has broken some of the solder joints on the circuit board on the printed circuit. So I don't know if I'll be able to resolder this, if the solder uh, pads will still take. Uh, but what I'm gonna try to do is go ahead and desolder and remove the three capacitors look up the numbers on the side of the capacitor, see if I can order them online. And uh, you know, if that doesn't work, I'm not out anything but a little bit of time, about an hour, and then I'll break down and buy the $1,200, $1,500 new fuel injection control module for this truck. So uh, that's what we're gonna try to do now, get our soldering supplies out and uh, desolder this board and uh, see if it looks like it's salvageable. Sometimes with the old solder, you got to add a little bit of new solder to it to get it to melt down, especially when it's burnt up like this. I don't think this is just straight solder. I think there's parts of the capacitor have leaked down into the board. This pad is looking very rough. Hopefully it's still salvageable. Well guys, no happy ending or cheap ending for me today. As you can see, the board has been destroyed. There is no saving this to uh, solder in a new capacitor. You see this capacitor's pad, this one's pad, and this one has just blown a hole nearly clear through the board. So no saving that. Uh, we can take a look. Can take a look here at that failed capacitor and how it just melted down and uh, Ruin my board. And we can compare that to one of the capacitors that was still good. So yeah, a little $2.20 capacitor burnt out a $1,800 module. So I'm not sure if I'm gonna make this a standalone video or if I'm gonna wait and buy the replacement module and install it for this video. Uh, but if I don't, Thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you next time. And if you have an issue with your FICM, I hope and pray that yours is rebuildable for your sake.